Greetings, hello, uh, welcome. Uh, I am George uh, Georgi Bitadze, uh, and I'm talking to you from uh, Georgian Tea House Museum, which is located in Tbilisi Center. And today we're going to talk about uh, Georgian tea, its history, its rise and its fall and situation today. Um, and also we're going to talk about what we are doing, what is this place and what it represents. So. Let's start the presentation. Uh, now I want to say one thing that this is a pre-recording because we had some problems with the uh, first recording. There were some quality issues. So I'm doing this again. Uh, now, before we talk about Georgian tea's history, we need to talk about uh, a little bit about the tea history overall, world tea history, what kind of situation there was in the world. So Georgian tea history starts in 19th century. Now 19th century, um, it's a century of uh, big empires, the British empire, Russian empires. And in that century, very important thing happened. What happened was that tea uh, from being a simple, you know, household uh, item, household uh, uh, drink became a necessary drink in the army and in the hard labor. So the demand for the tea, for the strong black tea, uh, got very, very high, very, very fast. So at that time, only manufacturer of tea, uh, the biggest manufacturer was China. And it was making a really good money out of it, out of selling tea into the Britain, Britain and Russia and other countries. So British Empire decided that they had enough of this and they uh, decided to grow tea uh, in their territories. So they uh, replanted uh, Chinese uh, tea bushes into India, which was of course that time India's colony, uh, a British colony, uh, and they planted it in Darjeeling and acclimatization process went well and they started to grow tea there uh, and they started to, grow, to make uh, like a British uh, tea for the army and hard labor. Now Russian Empire uh, also uh, tried to copy Britain and they tried uh, to grow Chinese uh, tea bushes in the Russian territory, which failed and it failed multiple times. Uh, you know, basically uh, the climate was not the right uh, in Russia. It was too cold uh, and uh, saplings didn't survive. They had multiple attempts. Uh, last attempt was in uh, Crimea uh and in the nikitska botanical garden and as i said uh, all the tea bushes there were not doing well so finally the decision was made to replant these chinese tea bushes into georgia into west georgia in ozurgeti region village anasoli uh that time georgia was part of the russian empire just like um uh india was part of uh, Brit britain british empire and uh, the year was uh, 1847. And this was the first time when uh, tea bushes were planted in Georgia for agricultural reasons. So 1847, we celebrate this um, year as a birthday of uh, Georgian tea. And uh, tea acclimatization process went very well. Uh, tea bushes survived and that led to developing tea industry in Georgia. Now, uh, every, all this process was uh, led by uh, Mikhail Voronsov, which was a Russian prince and field marshal uh, in uh, Caucasus region. Um, and the next, so the next important date in Georgian tea was in 1893. Uh, where uh, a private uh, sector, um, um, Popov, which was a Russian merchant, like you can say that he was like a businessman of that time, uh, he invested a tremendous amount of money uh, in, in Georgian tea. He basically bought all the equipment, uh, everything, and he even invited a Chinese tea master, uh, which name was Liu Zhenzhou, uh, I want to show you him in the picture. Um, so right here, 
This is Liu Zhenzhou. Uh, he's now, this picture is of course colorized, but he's standing in, it's in Georgia. This picture is uh, in Georgia and he's standing behind the tea saplings in uh, Osrogeji region. Um, so this is his family, of course, uh, as well in Georgia. So this Chinese tea master started to teach Georgians how to make tea, how to grow tea, how to manufacture it uh, together with Popov, with Popov's uh, finances. And they built uh, factories. Now, uh, this one is the first factory in, uh, in village Chakvi. This is Ajara region. Uh, and this is the same factory from outside. And the plantations here, so the manufacturing of Georgian tea began and it was a high quality product, exclusive product. Um, and uh, next very important date in Georgian's teas is that the tea that Liu Zhenzhou produced, uh, it participated, participated into, uh, in, in Paris in year 1900. There was a world exhibition of world uh, destinations uh, in Paris in year 1900. And this tea, uh, it was called, well, Popov's tea, um, uh, made by Liu Zhenzhou. So this is the original package. This is which uh, the original package we have in our museum. Uh, if you visit us, you can see it in a good condition. And this tea, uh let me second so this is the magnified uh so this tea won a big golden medal in this exhibition it won multiple nominations and also big golden medal and uh and grand uh, prix uh, award and also you can see where this tea was distributed so it was distributed to russian imperial house it, it was distributed to Austria, Hungary, uh, the Persian uh, Shah, which was uh, Iran, and uh, Norway, and Romania, and all these other countries. So the quality of this tea was very high. And, it, uh, and the year 1900 was a big success for Georgian tea. It was proof that you can make high quality tea in Georgia. Uh, and the award, like uh, where it won, it said that it was the best tea in the world uh, by Popov. Now, um, because of the success of uh, Georgian tea, uh, now the Russian imperial uh, family is getting interested in Georgian tea. So what happens is that uh, they realize that, you know, oh, it's a money here. So they basically kick Popov out. Uh, so, you know, uh, Popov was like a, a private sector, right? Like a businessman. So they kick him out. They force Liu Zhenzhou to uh, work for them. And uh, the tea production in Georgia becomes Russian family's business, uh, Russian uh, imperial family's business. And of course, uh, the manufacture and agriculture goes very up, but the quality is slowly going down because uh, now it was more about quantity and not quality. This product was uh, being designed for the Russian army and for the hard labor. Uh, now there are uh, lots of interesting pictures here, uh, especially this one. Now this is uh, like 19th century. This is a tea cellar right here. This is an old tea cellar in Tbilisi streets. This is how tea was sold back in the Tbilisi. Uh, so here, uh, this man has a teapot, right? And under the teapot here, there is a, a hot charcoal. And he was basically moving this charcoal to keep water hot. And you would call him like, uh, come here, please. And he would run away with the, uh, with this teapot and he would pour the tea to you. Uh, and then you would pay him here. Uh, he had the, uh, teacups and also some sweets, uh, to accompany your drink. Uh, this is another uh, sketch. This is a sketch from Oskar Schmeling, also a tea seller in Tbilisi streets. Um, so, so, 
So here you can also see um, the plantations, the old plantations. This is actually the pictures uh, and the, one of the first, the biggest factories as well. So um, so after, uh, so then uh, in the Russian empire, basically uh, transitions into Soviet Union. Uh, Georgia was also a part of Soviet Union. Um, and uh, tea production went dramatically high. Uh, during Soviet Union, uh, when it comes to science, when it comes to machinery, when it comes to everything else, you know, it went tremendously up. We had uh, lots of universities like tea universities, research institutes. Uh, production went very high. Georgia was number four in the world in tea production after China, India, and Sri Lanka. Uh, considering that you can only grow tea in the West Georgia, which is a subtropical region, uh, and considering that Georgia is a very small country, it was a very impressive number. But when it comes to tea quality, because the goal was to basically uh, have, you know, give uh, tea to Soviet Union uh, to, and to Eastern Europe, tea quality was uh, low. I mean, it was a mass product. It was a simple mass product. Uh, it was uh, basically uh, industrial production. Uh, Georgia became industrial uh, produ uh, tea producing country. Uh, just like India, just like Kenya, just like Sri Lanka, and not like a farmer uh, tea. There was no farmer high quality teas, for example, like China and Japan. Uh, here, like you can see the original uh, like posters, and uh, as you can see, the plantation scale was very big at that time. But uh, more Soviet Union was basically deteriorating. Uh, Georgian tea was also the quality was going down and down and down, and then uh, you know uh, when Soviet Union collapsed, uh, tea Georgian tea industry collapsed uh, with it because it. Basically, it was a specific tea made for Soviet Union market. And also, of course, we had a war uh, later and then civil war and war with Russia. Economy went down. Everything was destroyed. And tea is the agriculture which needs a lot of attention. So after a collapse of Soviet Union uh, from 2006 till 2006, Basically, Georgian tea situation was uh, very bad. 99% uh, of plantations were um, destroyed or went rogue. Uh, there was no standards, there was no quality control, there was no new technologies implemented, nothing. Uh, there were just like one or two uh, factories which uh, remain, remained with old uh, machinery, uh, Soviet machinery and which worked not even full time. They were working like maybe one or two months uh, a year. Um, and there were some few teens enthusiasts left who were making tea. Uh, now, before we, you know, um, before we touch uh, present situation uh, and what we are doing, uh, I want to tell you why Georgian tea. Like, for example, okay, it got destroyed. Uh, why we need to revive Georgian tea? Well, why Georgian tea is special? Um, uh, just like, uh, you, you know, there are many teas. For example, Darjeeling has its unique taste, unique character. Just like Chinese teas also have unique taste, unique uh, character. Uh, and so does the Georgian tea. Georgian tea is the northest tea producing country. Uh, and uh, it's a subtropical, it produces subtropical tea, which means that tea uh, rarely gets bitter. It's almost impossible to make Georgian tea bitter. It has low caffeine, so it's good, for example, for, it's more recommended for children. And uh, for example, if someone have uh, hypertension, uh, uh, and uh, it has its unique uh, also aroma and taste, uh, like other, for example, Darjeeling or uh, Chinese teas. It has like a honey flower kind of taste, the terror, the Georgian tea's terror is uh, honey and flowers. Uh, 
Uh, also, the big uh, plus that Georgian tea has is that Georgian, uh, the tea bush doesn't get sick in Georgia. Uh, we don't have uh, pests and we don't have uh, serious diseases. I mean, of course, we have some diseases here, but it doesn't really affect uh, tea production and tea bush overall uh, because uh, we have four seasons here. We have, uh, you know, uh, winter and uh, tea plantations are covered with the snow, so it protects them uh, it uh, from freezing at summer, uh, at winter, and also it protects us from pests and diseases. Uh, and also Georgian soil is famous for its fertility. Uh, Georgian so soil has a high content of minerals. And uh, all these factors are, uh, you know, very unique and uh, worthy to revive this uh, culture in Georgia. Uh, now, uh, what happened in 2006 was that my father, Shota Bitadze, who lived in um, China several years and was uh, importing Chinese tea into Georgia, he once thought that, oh, uh, uh, you know, Georgian tea has uh, so much uh, uh, like good sides. Why not make high quality Georgian tea uh, in Georgia and then sell it in Georgia and maybe in China? Uh, so. He started to um, research uh, about Georgian tea, uh, and he tried, and he started to gather uh, like farmers who would listen to him. Uh, that time situation was very bad. Uh, the average price for Georgian tea per kilo was like two dollars, uh, and this is the price where you can't uh, you can't develop with that price if you're a farmer. Uh, the tea was not profitable business and nobody knew what to do as i said um, during soviet union tea was uh, industrial product right people knew how to go to the big factory how to push button and tea would come out you know uh, we had the uh, the farmer you know the culture for example in wine in wine making well people would make wine with their own hands when, when it comes to tea, because tea wasn't endemic product, in Georgia, we people generally didn't have that knowledge. Uh, just like, for example, in China and Japan, where they had, it was the same situation like, for example, in African countries and India and Sri Lanka. Um, and there were situations where, you know, people in village, they had tea bushes in their garden and they didn't know how to make tea and they were buying tea in a supermarket, like a Lipton or something. So my father started in 2006 and uh, 10, uh, almost 15 years passed. And now what we have is we have a team of farmers who we have, and we created the Georgian Organic Tea Producers Association. This is uh, the union of farmers uh, and tea specialists who uh, basically specialize in high quality organic uh, farmer teas. Um, some of them are handmade, some of them are semi handmade. Um, and uh, when we created this association, we developed uh, our own standards. So we have our own standards, our own quality control uh, and uh, production line uh, uh, regulations uh, like that. And then when we started, uh, we also realized that Georgia and Georgian tea has a very hidden gem, which nobody knew about, which was a wild tea. Now, uh, what happened in Georgia was that when Soviet Union collapsed, all these plantations were abandoned. Some of them got destroyed, but some of them uh, merged with the nature. So uh, forests, you know, so we found tea in the forests, uh, which, you know, were far away from civilization. Um, you know, these teas were abandoned for 30, 40, 50 years. And here you can see like uh, here, here's the tea. Right, here's the tea and here's the acacia forest, right, which is very unique uh, for Georgia. And uh, this kind of tea, the wild tea, 
it's very famous, especially in uh, Eastern Asia, Asia, in China, they call it Ye Cha, and it's very, very uh, expensive there. Um, and it's very, very rare to have uh, uh, Thea sinensis, which is a subtropical tea in a wild form. Uh, but in Georgia, we actually, we have a huge, uh, like, areas with this. So we started to make, um, to discover this kind of tea, gar uh, tea uh, gardens in the forests, especially in the Mareti Highland regions. And then we would protect it, and then we would uh, make tea with this uh, wild tea. Um, uh, so uh, we also have the wild teas right now, which are very special. They have very distinctive, unique aroma and taste. Um, now, of course, uh, the 10 years passed uh, till like 2006, 2010. And during these years, we were also training our farmers uh, in China and in other countries uh, for new technologies. Uh, they would uh, learn like uh, orthodox tea technologies and, and everything and going to the international tea college and etc. Especially in China because they have huge uh, tea institutes there. Um, and in 2014, this decision was made by Shota, by my father, to open a uh, Georgian tea house and museum. Here, this is the... Uh, like a special place in Tbilisi where you can see all the old artifacts of uh, Georgian tea, like uh, old packages, books, you know, researches, uh, anything, posters from King's era. So we have like 130 years old uh, tea packages from the uh, Russian Empire, that, which I showed you. And then we also have the Soviet era teas and you can actually compare how quality was going down, 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 like the Soviet uh, economy was also going down with it. Um, and also uh, this place represents our work. Here you can find all our teas and you can buy them. Uh, here we have like 30 types of uh, Georgian teas uh, here, which are our production, which we produce. And uh, also the degustation table here is also available. You can uh, taste tea with us and talk with us. We are open uh, every day. It's in Galaktion Tabitze uh, number 15 in uh, uh, near uh, Liberty Square. And we are open uh, from 11 to 8 o'clock. But you can always contact us uh, if you have some special meeting or anything. And we can open it for you. Uh, the door is always open for you. Uh, in any time for us. Um, now, when uh, Shota started, uh, one of the main problems in Georgia was that we had no specialists. Uh, we had no tea experts or tea masters. Uh, Shota had the knowledge, but he need, needed to spread knowledge to have more specialists and more uh, uh, tea testers, tea masters. So he created tea school. So now, uh, tea school is also alive. Um, tea school is the place where basically you can learn anything when it comes to tea. Uh, you can learn how to brew it correctly. Uh, you can learn how to grow tea, how to make tea uh, from tea bush, from you know the agricultural and uh, other aspects. You can learn tea history. Uh, you can learn uh, and like uh, the differences between uh, world tea and etc. So it's basically the place where you can basically learn anything about tea. And we are still doing it. For example, it's very popular among um, uh, newly opening restaurants or cafes uh, where they sell uh, orthodox teas, farmer teas, and they want to know, you know, how to properly sell tea, how to properly present tea. Also, there's a tea sommelier as well, which, you know, uh, co um, uh, collects like, uh, for example, tea with a, with a dessert or tea with some uh, various foods. So they also learned that. Um, now in 2018, we started uh, tea tourism. Now tea tourism is very, uh, 
new food for Georgia, but it's actually a very uh, popular um, uh, type of tourism in East Asia. Uh, if you are familiar with wine tourism, you know in Georgia we have wine tourism where you go to some chateau and you uh, absorb the wine production. You can actually make wine by yourself and taste it and degustations. Now it's similar to that, but this time you're going to uh, tea estates. So in tea farms, in tea plantations and tea gardens, and you're plucking uh, tea by, with your hands and we are actually uh, teaching you how to make it. You're living with the tea farmers. Now, this is the tea route. Now we have a wine touristic route and in 2018, we are, uh, presented tea route into a tea festival. And it starts from Tbilisi, it goes to Imereti, Guria. Um, in Imereti, you are visiting the, the highland tea plantations, wild tea gardens. Um, and then in Guria and in Ajara, you are visiting uh, lowland uh, seaside uh, tea plantations. And, uh, and of course, uh, you're staying in um, traditional uh, Georgian uh, family you're uh, staying with your with that farmers uh, and what we offer is that um, visiting and living in tea estates of various regions of georgia making your own tea you can pluck it make it and then take it with you in original package and also uh, when we after we work hard uh, uh, in plantation we would uh, sit down and degustate some various georgian teas uh, you know, with Georgian tea ceremony, which I'm going to present to you later. And also enjoying traditional uh, feast with local cuisine, wine and tea. And also we can uh, visit near, nearby famous historical and hidden gems in the Marathi and Guria regions. Um, so also, uh, now I'm I want to show you some uh, video, which we made from our last tea tour. <laughs> Hope you enjoy that. Um, so we are uh, these days. We also launched a website of our brand and our association of organic tea producers, which is called teagorgia.com. Here you can learn about anything: who we are, what we do, about our team, our team members, our farmers. You can uh, find information about our farmers, what we, what they do, what, how they do it, when they started. Uh, we also uh, are working on our blog, and uh, very soon we're gonna launch an online shop where you can actually um, purchase tea online in. Uh, any from anywhere like in if you're in georgia or abroad uh, and then you can learn about anything about our tea museum about our tea school uh, if you're interested you can contact us uh, as well um, now thank you uh, for listening to me i'm uh, georgi bitadze here's my um email and uh, address and phone number if you have any questions about Georgian tea, or if you want to come in our tea museum, uh, you're, uh, every time our door is open for you, it's better to call in advance. For example, if you want to book uh, some um, degustation of Georgian tea and so well. So now I will try to uh, make Georgian tea. Um,
Okay, welcome back. Um, so now we're going to have a Georgian tea ceremony. Now, um, you know, um, when we started tea school, you know, uh, it always uh, bothered us because Georgia didn't really have its own um, tea ceremony. Uh, we had, you know, the Ch uh, China, for example, had its own um, tea ceremony with the Jin Fu Cha. Japan, the, the matcha, and even Russians don't have a tea ceremony with the Samoa, they don't do it. So, um, we wanted to create something unique, something Georgian, which would be able to suit the uh, Georgian mentality and Georgian identity. So, we came up with this. Now, this is uh, brewing and tea in decanter. Now, what I'm brewing here is wild white tea. From the Nereki Highland Forest. I'm going to explain uh, why, uh, and then, uh, what's, the, uh, what's the purpose of doing white tea in the canter. Uh, it's not, not just for the fancy. Okay? So, I'm going to do it. Now, there was a question. Uh, I will try and to remember and answer all the questions which uh, you asked in the um, original uh, recording. And some of the questions was, the, what, what was the white tea, I believe? Uh, uh, you know, tea plant is same. You can make wild, black, or green teas from same tea plant. Uh, the, the difference is, the only difference is the technology, all right? The black tea is fermented tea, which means that it's oxidized, okay? You're, you're uh, making uh, oxidation process faster, okay? Green tea is a fixated tea, which means that it's totally different. Uh, you uh, cut the oxidation process and you stop it. Uh, usually it, uh, it, it goes by heat. Uh, and white tea, now white tea is very unique. Now, as you can see here, this right now looks like a green tea, okay? If you smell it, it also has like a fresh grassy uh, smell and aroma, which indicates that it's most likely it's a green tea, I mean, uh, you know, uh, but it's not, it's a white tea actually. And white tea, it's a semi firm it's a, uh, self-fermenting tea, okay? So what it means that <coughs> by time, it changes itself. <coughs> so for example, uh, green tea, usually uh, quality of green tea goes down after six months of its manufacture because the fresher the green tea is, the better. The black tea, usually after two years, the quality goes down and the price White tea, which is not well known, uh, but white tea is one of the most healthiest and uh, most expensive food in the world as well, uh, is that uh, it changes by time. And in China, it's believed that the older white teas are better, just like, for example, wine. So, uh, why we are brewing this tea in the country, right? So, now you can see that it's green, but it's getting yellowish, right? So, what the canter does, now this is a decanter, uh, if you know the canter is usually for the wine, for the red wine, and the idea is that the, here's the infused area, right here, right, so infused area for oxygen to touch the liquid, so it oxidizes faster and it helps wine to wake up, it helps wine to develop this, you know, open up this aroma uh, uh, for it and make it wine better. So now, the, the same process, similar, not saying, but similar process is going here in the canter for the white tea, okay? Uh, and we will see by time, we will see by time that uh, white tea will change. And also what white tea has, the uniqueness, is that <coughs> you can brew white tea several times, okay? 10 grams of white tea will give you three, three to five uh, liters of uh, infusion. So for example, what you would do is that you would brew the tea, then you would 
you know, put the tea in the other jar and then you would add water in that. And then you would do this multiple times, multiple times. And especially with the wild tea, it's, uh, it's uh, more common because wild tea is very rich with a chemical content. So uh, I just want to compare the liquids right now. Now I will compare it. Because uh, this is a pre recording and I can uh, stop uh, the recording when I want. Uh, basically, uh, later I will, uh, I will save this. I will save this infusion right here. And as you can see, this is like a greenish infusion here. And then later, when we will come back, uh, after multiple infusions, as I said, after multiple infusions, it will go darker and darker and darker, which means it will self-ferment. Okay? So, uh, we represented uh, Georgian wild teas and uh, Georgian tea ceremony in, in um, International Tea Forum and International Tea Masters Cup, which was held in Seoul in South Korea. And uh, Georgian tea actually won in three nominations. Georgian black tea won in three nominations, best taste, best aftertaste, uh, and best aroma. So it was a big success for us at that moment. Um, now, also there was some question, uh, how to distinguish, you know, how to tell uh, the quality of tea, like which one is bad, which one is good. Now, here, Usually the quality of tea depends on uh, several factors. The biggest factor is where it's plucked. So it should be organic or you know, natural, free without any pesticides. So soil uh, has a big factor. Uh, but when it comes to the material itself, it's this right here. So this is the tea leaf. Uh, and the fresher is the leaf uh, quality in the tea, the better is tea, tea quality. So the best quality tea usually is made only from the bud or from only from the bud or bud and the first leaf. Okay. And then you go and then there's a grades, like for example, uh, then you can go like second leaf, third leaf, fourth leaf. Usually tea bags, um, they use like five leaves, at least uh, even six. Uh, and usually the youngest leaves are the healthiest ones. Just like, for example, meat, uh, you usually want to um, uh, eat like uh, uh, fresh meat, like a young uh, meat, right? Uh, everything good, good is in young. So uh, same for the plant. The best nutritious and chemical content is in these two right here. And uh, the difference, for example, between a tea bag and the loose leaf tea is that you can actually see the material that is used, right? For example, in our tea right here, uh, you can see the leaf quality here, which is also like a best quality, which is bud and the first leaf, right? Uh, here we go. Another example is now sometimes there is a Second leaf, but usually it's a bud and the first leaf, right? And in a tea bag, you usually can't really see the quality because it's all broken down, okay? Uh, and uh, usually in supermarkets, for example, you can't tell uh, when the tea is manufactured. They usually tell you when it's packed, but not manufactured. So these were the questions. Uh, I mean, there was a one question about uh, the package, our package. Uh, we have multiple packages. Uh, usually it's uh, like a doy pack uh, package, a simple doy pack or in the wooden packages for uh, present um, and etc. Uh, and also uh, when, you come, when you come to our tea house and tea museum, uh, besides, you know, absorbing uh, all art, old artifacts and pictures and posters and books and also absorbing our uh, assortment, uh, Georgian Tea's assortment. This is the only place where you can buy high quality organic real Georgian Tea's. Uh, uh, besides that, you can also uh, create your own, your own tea. Um, usually, I can show you, uh, usually when, when um, customer is coming, 
we show them now this is also we have uh, various verbals here which is mixable with p so for example when customer comes and he wants to do some uh, mixing uh, for example we suggest that oh i know green tea goes well with mint we can uh, create like special uh, mixture for you or for like a lavender or osmanthus flowers or anything so everything is uh, natural you can see uh, and, clean. and also here's the georgian tea right here um, and here are all old artifacts of uh, packages and teas are still inside of them in some of them here we have like a more of a soviet era they're all full with tea and here you can see the 130 years old package which i showed you in the presentation also eugen joe's uh, original package also it's still here to uh, 120 years old and other packages well and tea so uh our door is always open for you. Uh, if you have any questions, please contact me uh, tgeorgia.com. As I said, uh, it's a great source for the information. And thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, now, we're going to check our tea here. Now, as you can see, it's getting yellow right now. Okay. Uh, it was green. Now it's yellow. And when we're going to come back, I will wait maybe like uh, one hour <laughs> for this. I will stop it and then we're gonna observe how tea changed. Now I'm gonna drink this tea multiple times uh, and I will be back. So see you. Welcome back. And this is how tea looks right now. So you can see it goes darker and darker and this is actually a fifth or sixth infusion so i think i used um three uh three of those three or four of those uh, full of tea <laughs> i drink a lot of tea i think but as you can see this is how the tea looks right now it's almost looks like black now the infusion itself is black right but you can see the leaves are still um like a white tea all right so thank you very much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, as I said, this is a pre-recording because we had some issues with quality for the original one. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me via email, via mobile phone, via messenger. Uh, and we'll give you anything uh, which you're interested in. So thank you and bye-bye.